Welcome to part 12 of Space Rocks. This is the Godot game engine tutorial where we're making an asteroid style game. Last time we had the enemy start shooting at the player and this time around we need to make those enemy bullets damage the player as well as we're going to make the player be able to damage the enemy. And we'll also do some other small things along the way. All right, let's get started. So I started off by adding a damage function to the player. This is the player script. And that just lets me send it an amount and it will reduce the shield and disable the player if they have and blow them up if they have uh, run out. And so we're having the asteroid when it enters just call that damage function. And we're going to do that because now we need the enemy bullets to also damage the player. Now there's a couple different ways we could do this. We could put an uh, on area enter here and detect on the player when the bullet enters it and damage the player then. But I'm going to go on the enemy bullet and I'm going to do the hit detection there because I might want, and I think I will uh, with some of the things I'm thinking about doing, I might want the enemy bullet to be able to hit and damage more than just the player. So this way the enemy will detect whatever it hits and send damage to that object that it hit. So that means we're just going to, on the enemy scene, we're going to connect the area enter method. Okay, so we go to our enemy bullet scene here and we take our area enter and we're gonna connect that. So when something enters, well, we can do a couple, of, do this a couple of different ways. We could say if it enters the, the node named player, then we can uh, do damage to it. But we could also say if any of the node, if the node you enter has the method damage, and that's what we're going to do so that we can do this with other areas as well. So if it has a, a damage method, that means it can be damaged. So we're going to queue free and we're going to damage that area. And we're going to damage it by whatever damage our bullets are going to do. So that's another thing we can add to global. So I've added over here on global an enemy bullet damage. And so that's how much damage we want to do. So on our player, or sorry, on our enemy bullet, we're going to do that much damage. Okay, we'll try that out real quick. Here we are. Wait for the enemy to come out, and sure enough, my shield is going down when I'm getting hit. So now we need to do the same thing for the player's bullets hitting the enemy. So I've added a bullet damage, so the player's bullets will do this much damage, the enemy will have this much health, and the enemy will be worth uh, 100 points when you kill it. So then we're going to go to the player bullet, or sorry, first we'll go to the enemy, and we're going to just add a damage function to the enemy. So now if the enemy takes some damage, we'll reduce its health. And if its health goes below zero, it's gone. And the problem will be, now watch what happens when we run this. So I haven't done anything with the player bullets yet, but now when the enemy appears, it's going to kill itself because on the enemy bullet, we said if it has a damage method to the damage. Well, that means the enemy is killing itself because it's doing its own damage to itself. So we're going to solve that by putting the enemy in a group, add to group enemies, and then on the enemy bullet, we're going to check what groups the area we hit is in, and if it's an enemy, it's not going to count. So we'll get groups and see if it has enemies. And that should take care of our enemy destroying itself with its own bullets. Okay. So now we need to finish up with the player bullets. So the player bullets, we have said now if it finds an enemy, it's going to hit. Oh, and we did this in the wrong place. This would give us points every time we hit the enemy. Uh, but we only want to give the points when we destroy it. So that needs to be over here. If the health got down to zero, we're 
we're going to add the points. All right, so now since our player bullet does 10 damage and our enemy has 30 health, it should take us three hits to kill it. Okay, and I got 100 points. Now let's make that enemy explode. So we're going to have a an explode signal that we're going to emit when our damage, you know, when our health reaches zero. So emit signal explode. And we will attach that on the main when we spawn the enemy so that we can create an explosion when that happens, just like we did, just like we did with the asteroids. So when we spawn a player on the enemy timer here, we're going to add the connect there to explode. So we will put that here. Connect the explode signal to ourself. And we're going to, we have an explode player function. We're going to make an explode enemy function. Again, this is probably going to be one of those we can combine some of this code together, but I'm not really concerned about doing that yet. The project hasn't gotten that big yet. Not a whole lot of code. Um, and so it's enough for us to uh, just try and get the stuff working first. That's really all I'm uh, concerned with at the moment. Um, oh, we're going to need to pass the position, right? So the explode enemy function is going to need a position so we know where to put the explosion. So, so we'll spawn a new explosion. And we'll add that as a child. And then we're going to do set pause to whatever position we said. We're going to set the animation to the we're going to use that sonic animation, which is the bigger one. And we're going to, and we're going to play it. And, oh, and this is e.connect. We're connecting a signal from the enemy. And then on the enemy, we just need to make sure when we emit that signal, we need to also pass our position. All right, let's check this out now. Get that enemy to come out, and then we will shoot it. Okay. So now let's add a little feedback so that we can see when we hit the enemy. Because right now, when the bullet hits it, it just sort of the bullet disappears and nothing really happens. So we're going to make the enemy flash a little bit. So we're going to use the an animation node that we've already that we've already added here that's doing our rotate, and we're just going to make a new animation. So we're going to make a new animation called hit. In the hit animation, all we're going to do is we're going to take the sprites modulate parameter and we're going to just modulate the color so it flashes with a red color effect. So I'm going to do that and skip over all of the clicking and show you the result. Okay, we're back. So here's the animation. So I've taken the modulate property and made a track for it. So we start out with it normal. Uh, and then if we go, I'm doing the steps of one one hundredth of a second. So four hundredths of a second over, I change the modulate to red. And I made a keyframe. And then I just repeated those. And a quick way you can do that is if you move to another spot in the time step and you click on a keyframe, you can right click and choose duplicate selection and it'll duplicate that same frame there. And I did that so that we would have a multiple blinks, right? So every time you run it, you're going to get a couple of red flashes. And that's all we need. So now we just want to play this hit animation whenever the enemy is hit. So we'll go back over to our script. And right here in our damage function, we're going to just say play the hit animation whenever you are damaged. So let's try that out. All right, yeah, there. See how it flashes when we hit it? Okay, perfect. And then we blow it up. So the other thing I wanted to do this time around was experiment some more with the enemy shooting because I had an idea. 
Last time we made the enemy shoot either a single bullet or a spread of three. And both of those were nice, but I also wanted to test doing it one other way, which is having the enemy shoot a pulse of bullets. So three bullets, but not all at the exact same time. And for that, we're gonna need a custom timer. So I've made a signal for it. Pulse timeout is going to be emitted whenever the timer runs out. And we just need to make a pulse timer to track that. And so we're going to do that in the ready function. Add it as a child. Uh, we need to declare it. So what we're going to do with this timer is we're going to connect its timeout. We're going to connect its timeout signal to a function that emits another signal. And we have to do that because what's going to happen is when we want to fire a pulse of bullets, so we'll do shoot a pulse, and we're going to say you can shoot a pulse with any number of bullets in it, right? So some number of bullets at a time uh, with some delay between them, right? And so we're going to count to that number. We're going to shoot. We're going to shoot one, which we've already done, which is going to actually make the bullet go. And then we're going to call a function called delay for that amount of time, or let's call it pulse delay. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going to do a pulse delay for that amount of time. And then we're going to yield, which means stop running this function until a certain until a certain signal is detected, and that's the pulse uh, timeout time out. Okay, and so that means our delay function. I'm going to put this down at the end. Pulse delay. All the pulse delay does is takes a takes a time an amount that we want the timer to wait for and we're going to take the pulse timer and we're going to set the wait time to that can't spell today we're going to take the pulse timer and we're going to set its timer process mode to 0 we're going to start it. Okay. And then we already said that when the pulse timer times out, it's going to admit, it's going to call this function. And this function is going to emit. This function is going to emit that pulse timeout signal that this is waiting for. Oops, that should be emit signal. And then we want to say up here on the shoot that we're going to shoot uh, a pulse. And we're going to shoot three bullets with a tenth of a second delay between them. Okay, and that's going to look like this. Very nice. Okay. Uh, well, we see a problem here. The bullets are still hitting the player even though the player has been disabled. We set the player to invisible. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say if target dot is visible. That way when we when the player has been destroyed, we're not still shooting at it and entering, having bullets enter its area. There we go. See, now the, there's nothing for the enemy to shoot at. All right, so that'll do it for this video. That was a really fun one. Uh, I think the enemy is coming together really well. Two other things that I just did real quick was I added an accuracy factor. This is a number of radians that the when the bullet is fired, it will vary by. 
so that it's not ever it's not shooting in a perfectly straight line so i just added that here in the shoot function when it spawns the bullet i'm adding a random factor there uh and so that's just going to make it so that the bullets are a little less accurate so yeah, there's a little bit more variation especially when you're moving to Okay, and the other thing I added was this little particle trail. Okay, so I just added a particle 2D, and I'm just playing around with that. I'm not entirely sure that's exactly how I want it, but I think it looks okay to start with for now. And one other thing we could do is if you want to be really mean to the player, uh, you shoot a pulse of the triple spread And then you've got, oh, really hard. All right, so for right now, that is going to be good enough for the enemy. We're going to keep it like that until we start uh, implementing the difficulty levels and start varying this by uh, how far along in the game you've gotten. Okay, I hope you had fun following along this time, and I will see you in the next video.